Hello, I'm Philip Stoughton for ID People. I'm here at ID World in Rio de Janeiro and I'm joined by Manuel Villamayor. Thank you very much for joining me. Always good to see you. You presented yesterday, I think? Right. Yeah. Tell me a bit about the topics you were tackling. Okay. First, to thank you very much to invite me, to give me this opportunity to explain also what I presented yesterday. Um, well, the, the presentation was around the uh, new challenges for the industry and the expectation for, from the governments. Mm -hmm. Uh, till now, the way we had implemented uh, national ID programs, or any kind of ID program, was based basically in just smart cards. That uh, uh, we never evaluate or take the time to really evaluate what will be the cost and total investment mm -hmm. from the governments in order to really implement uh, the overall solution, not just uh, the point of the iceberg that uh, everybody is focusing today, and till now, that was uh, uh, to define the cost for a biometrics database, the cost of a smart card based on technologies that could be contact contactless, mm -hmm. and also the cost for the insurance. That this gave uh, uh, approximately a cost by citizen to implement uh, an ID card by city for, for each citizen in a country. Well, uh, some countries have did uh, this job, took so, uh, some time to move from plastic paper to uh, smart cards mm -hmm. in order to really give access to the citizen to e-government. The point now is uh, when they have issued the smart card, they now uh, see that basically they are missing also other elements in order that this solution is working. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the, the devices that they are requiring in order to interface this kind of smart card that have contact or contactless technology or even dual interface are the readers. Okay. And uh, when we talk about mm -hmm. readers, is also we have to define what are the needs on readers. It means do we have invest in the biometric readers, handheld readers to keep also police force in mm -hmm. order to check identity on the street to citizens. Also desktop readers that have to be implemented in uh, government departments mm -hmm. in order to really interact with this element yeah. that is this smart card. Well, once we have uh, defined it probably, what could be the amount and the investment from the government side just for the hardware we call uh, mm. for these smart card readers after comes the new question the next question that is what will be the cost to implement the readers in the field right okay well uh, this is a really a, a challenge for the government because they need to analyze how many departments they have uh, where they want to really implement the readers and when they have defined it what will be also the cost to implement uh, they have to think about the maintenance of this infrastructure. They have to think about to training people, educate citizens as well, because uh, this solution normally has to work in both ways. Right. Meaning the government is providing e-government services, and from the citizen side, they are getting access to e-government services that they need also smart card readers at home. This becomes challenging as well because the smart card readers was the block was developed by technicians and basically uh, a standard citizen is not able to implement by himself right. to plug a, a smart card reader in a computer to, to, to define the drivers that we need in order that this smart card reader works and, and this is where today the government understand that uh, we are not just talking about a smart card we are talking about an ecosystem yeah. <coughs> And, uh, and uh, we see now the, the, the reaction from the governments that uh, they, they, are is, they hesitate to really invest in smart cards. Is that because they haven't taken that? When they've looked at it in the first place, they haven't looked at it as an ecosystem. They've looked at parts exactly. and just underestimated the cost. Exactly. That's, they were focusing because the industry told, okay, you have to move in more security hmm. from a plastic or, or a card yeah. that is in paper or plastic to something that have in electronic yeah. inside. But now they see that some of the countries that they have implemented these documents, some countries from uh, 2005, 2006, they have already implemented this document, and nobody's using in the country. Mm. That means at the end of the day, they provide security, but they were not able to really provide convenience to the citizens. Right. And they're looking now because uh, technology is moving very fast. And what the technology available probably 10 years ago uh, it's totally different of the technology we have available today. Mm -hmm. We have the smartphones, everybody's talking about the smartphone, yeah. everybody talk about tablets, etc., etc. And uh, everybody's dreaming to interact with the digital world thanks to 
the own devices. That yeah. means, as a citizen, what I'm expecting is to have probably a document that I can interact with my government yeah. anytime, anywhere, with any device. Yeah. I don't need really a smart card reader in order to plug yeah. my smart card. Well, saying that, uh, what is now the consequences of, uh, I would say, this, uh, this uh, proposal that was really not appropriated? Uh, based on the expectation and need of the government, that uh, most of them are put on hold at their uh, national ID program. We see now the RIC here in Brazil. Mm -hmm. That uh, is, uh, is a program they are talking from six years now. They did a great job trying to really create this database, biometrics and demographic database. But the government, again, is challenging because they have it's a federalist uh, uh, country with uh, different uh, states. And uh, each of them, uh, there is not really something that is uh, uh, interoperable yeah. between the databases. That is a kind of a bubble tower. Yeah. And uh, and the challenge now is say, well, we can issue a document, but before we need to do some homeworks as well. Yeah. And uh, they are, I think they are taking the time to see what will be the next yeah. generation of a yeah. mass car, because yeah. basically this, the, the everything related to telecom have really moved very fast from the telephone, yeah. hand, handheld telephone, yeah. To a, a standard smartphone. mobile phone, yeah. a smartphone, etc. Yeah. And so they believe that today the technology was moving from magnetic stripe to contact, contactless, there is combining with dual interface, mm. but it's not enough. Yeah. That uh, needs to be more easier. Yeah. So and this is what I was presenting yeah. basically. So we have a position where <coughs> the governments have underestimated the size of the projects. The projects have got to a point where they haven't reached fruition, so they've they've stalled. Meanwhile, technology's moved along at a rapid pace, so the project probably looks different uh, when they started it in the first place, even though they didn't look at it properly. What next? How do they, how do they get out of that spiral of continuously delaying the project and continuously being behind the technology curve? Well, uh, this, this again is a uh, government today, uh, is, uh, they've changed a lot of their mind as well. And uh, I was surprised during the conference uh, during these days that uh, I see a government more proactive thinking about its services as well. Till mm -hmm. now, the government, I never heard from them that uh, they were worried to provide services to the citizen. They were, we need to deliver just uh, an ID, that's mm -hmm. it, we need to identify people. And now they understand that uh, the expectation also from the citizen, the, the new uh, uh, digital natives, and the new generation, and, and, and uh, most of the people in each, each country that is able to handle a, a smartphone, uh, they don't understand why with their banks mm -hmm. become so easy because banks are giving security but also convenience in order to get access to e-online banking right. in a very easy way and from the government side uh, is so complicated yeah and uh, they are pushing really a challenge by the cities and it's for that that uh, really they are changing uh, sometimes integrating new people in their teams right because they understood that uh, the identification is something that is a must have. Mm. But now they have to think about how we really we can communicate with yeah. our citizens yeah. because they are expecting this from the government, not anymore that we deliver just uh, a just document, but we provide also services. Yeah. And now from the industry point of view, what we did also is some homeworks, and so we were able to develop also a new uh, platform, a new smart card, that basically uh, what is uh, avoid to have, uh, uh, to require a smart card reader to interface with any kind of device. Mm. That basically the approach was to display, in a display, in an LCD display, uh, a number that is changing, yeah. it's, it's a dynamic key, yeah. that normally we are using all the time with uh, electronic passport yeah. or a national ID, any kind of ID, because it's a code that needs to be changed due to security reasons mm -hmm. on the chip. That yeah. every time that we are reading the chip, yeah. is changing the, exactly, yeah. to avoid to clone and to clone a, a, a smart card or, or, or a chip as well. But this code, that is really uh, uh, the key element, I would say, in order mm. to combine this dynamic code with the fixed code that is the card authentication number. Combining both is allowed to have a visual password authentication mm. connection establishment. That with, with this, with just having visually these two numbers, we can 
give the two number by voice, yeah. meaning that everybody can have access very easy with a yeah. telephone or a walkie-talkie, yeah. even the police in the street. Yeah. They can interact with um, a standard mobile phone, yeah. a smartphone, a computer with elements that everybody knows is yeah. using yeah. in their life. Just by having that communication and now, protocol there. Exactly. That's, uh, I see for the first time the government very excited about yeah. this because uh, some of them say, well, we were not really the pioneers issuing probably a national ID in electronics. Mm. But also we took the opportunity to probably wait a bit more in order to get really the benefits of, uh, of new these new technologies. And yeah. this is what is happening today. Yeah. That is uh, something revolution uh, is revolutionizing yeah. the situation. And uh, well, industry and, and government, yeah. I think now they have to also do. Now they have to work together exactly. to complete yeah. it. And like most things in life, timing is everything. So uh, getting there with the technology and everything in place is, is what makes it work. Manuel, thank you very much for stopping by. Thank You're you for welcome. your time. Always thank a you. pleasure. Thank, thank you, you very much.